Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the beautiful Luck and Barod Valleys in the Kulu and Kandrat district at the foothills of the Himalayas. This is module 26 as part of the Himalayan webinar series. As usual, we record this series on Zoom and Google Slides, and uh, we post them every day on Insta TV, YouTube, Facebook, and my blog, ultrajourneys.org. Thanks, Vishal, for that beautiful logo there. Okay, so what makes Luck and Barod special? Uh, these are actually uh, located next to the touristic and popular Manali Kulu Valley, but these are much lesser known. Uh, they are much more pristine than all big highways. There is no heavy tourist inflow. Very peaceful, very nice uh, valleys, uh, pristine. Quite a few uh, farming settlements are there, which makes it a perfect stops for uh, food and night hold. And a lot of trails here. I will show you some six beautiful passes connecting in between, as well as the neighboring uh, Kulu Valley and Kangra foothills. Here you can see the Lug Valley, a side valley of uh, Kulu Valley here. Kulu Valley is located here. Actually, the Kulu town itself is where this valley splits off uh, from uh, Kulu Valley, the Lug Valley. Okay, so today we'll start in Kulu. From there, we jump over the Himri Pass to the Lug Valley, and then jump over the Puhu Pass uh, to in, enter the beautiful Barod Valley. Barod is quite long. A little bit more touristic, but still very pristine. From there, we have an ancient railway pulley from where we can get to the Kangara Plains. Take a U-turn at Birbiling along the China Pass to enter back into the Barod Valley from where uh, we follow the Noru Pass uh, to get to another side of the Barod Valley and then jump over the Sari Pass back into the Lug Valley. So another beautiful kind of low altitude traverse in the foothills of the Himalayas. Perfect for those who want to start into alpine style hiking or uh, solo exploration. Much less risky than going those steep traverses like say uh, the Pir Panjal or the Dolador. Here you can see one of these typical uh, trails leading to these uh, passes, all very similar. You're in a pretty low altitude here, so lush green forests and uh, nice trails along your way. Okay, let's take a look at the map first to uh, orient ourselves. Here again, we are looking at Himachal, uh, the famous Manali Kulu Valley here. Uh, as discussed earlier, we have the prolonged Dolador range here that uh, goes from west to east and then turns uh, a bit north. This corner here, actually, this entire corner between uh, the Kulu Valley and the uh, Kangara Plains, you can say, uh, there we have some interesting stuff happening. So again, from Kulu, we have a side valley that goes uh, here inside, which is the Lug Valley. Lug Valley, and you can either enter through Kulu or you can take here the Himri Pass to enter. And uh, from the Lug Valley, actually, you have two passes, the Puvu Pass and the Sari Pass to then jump to the next valley. So this is not connected with uh, Kulu, but actually goes uh, pretty much parallel and, and joins somewhere at Mandi. So we have the Barod Valley here. The Barod Valley is a beautiful valley. It's also a formed by one of these side branches of the Dolador, both uh, Lug as well as um, uh, Barod are formed actually by the side branches of the main Dolador where we had the Tamsa, remember, the Makuri and the Kalihini path discussed earlier. So once we get in the Barod Valley, uh, quite a few options there. You have the Puli Pass here, which is an ancient uh, railway line to pull up materials for a hydro plant. Uh, I guess this was the preferred entry point in the olden days when the valley, which becomes a bit of a gorge, a little downstream here, was not much accessible yet by road transport. And then we have the China Pass leading to the left, uh, Biling, famous uh, paragliding site in the Kangara Plains. Uh, and then we have the internal Moru Pass uh, joining two branches of uh, the Barod Valley, uh, one leading to the Tamsar Pass, one leading to the Makori Pass, and then finally the beauty, the cherry on the cake, Sari Pass, which goes from Lohardi and Barod to the beautiful Lug Valley again. So enough to make a beautiful traverse right from Kulu through Himri to Buvu, and then here over the railway line we come here. We can get back over the China Pass, the Noru Pass, and the Sari Pass. Voila. So putting everything on a map, you can see uh, the same over here, as we discussed just now. 
Okay, so here are those six passes. Um, you can see the altitude is uh, much less than uh, some of the high passes we discussed in previous modules. Most of these you can easily do in, a, in, in one day. You don't have to be a super fit guy. And uh, still you get a good elevation gain and drop in uh, some of them, especially the Sari pass. Yeah, Sari pass is quite solid here. Uh, this you're gonna feel it, the legs definitely. Difficulty level, however, is mostly easy and moderate as you talk about mostly a well-defined uh, hiking trail and lower altitude, so less extreme climate, it's terrain and climate both actually. Okay, let's start with the Lug Valley. So the Lug Valley again, side valley of Kulu. Uh, let's jump in through the Himri Pass here. Let's get out through the Buhu Pass and then later after we circle around the Baru Valley, we'll enter again through the higher altitude Sari Pass. Sari Pass will still be covered in snow being 4,000 meter, I guess. Let me see, 3,700 are also pretty high. So it was covered in, even in July last year with a good amount of snow, which means uh, hiking poles are must as you will have quite a few snow gullies on the way, unless you go in August or September. Okay, first Himri. Himri starts from um, a small town called Himri, uh, accessible by bus and then contours a little bit before it climbs up steeply along beautiful meadows you'll see where you'll find shepherds and a lot of alpine flowers to finally uh, slightly contour to the Himri Pass. As you can see, many passes again always get accessed from the side rather than going straight up. After that, it's a simple uh, single straight side valley into the uh, Baro Valley. Here you can see a beautiful uh, house uh, where one of the guys who was sitting on the bus with me to Himri invited me immediately into his home. As you step away again from these touristic uh, valleys like Kulu, Parvati, you come into really less uh, commercial places where people are innocent and uh, much more gentle. You can see he has his own loom here, mini loom, to make his own clothes, and he has his own farm and vegetable gardens outside for his own food, and then a couple of buffaloes and goats uh, to complement the diet. Here you can see the lady, the grandma, staying at uh, his home, uh, immediately offering some tea. Nice old lady, very gentle, very pleasant company to come across these kind of people. Even though Himri is a very small village, again, it being a little away from that all that commercial nonsense, you get these beautiful uh, handmade uh, temples here out of wood, carved wood and uh, stone, uh, very similar to the architecture we saw in Dodra. On the border with Uttarakhand and Himachal. Okay, here as I told, as we climb out uh, up from Himri into the Alpine meadows, you get stunning views where it's all beautiful meadows with cattle, sheep grazing. Here you can see the road to Himri uh, from the Kulu Valley. There's a main Kulu Valley. And then on top, you can see beautiful views as you gain altitude on the high ranges of Kulu, that's towards the Parvati, towards the Pin National Park site. These are the kind of guys who stay there, uh, pretty much permanent or semi-permanent, I guess. Maybe they live in the winter, so they graze their cattle and their um, uh, sheep and uh, goat in these, even the horses are there in these meadows. And then typically uh, milk them uh, and sell the milk in the village. Here you can see a lady uh, steering a big daba full of milk, which probably gets then transported, I guess, by the horses into the village and sold in the market of Kulu. Beautiful trail, as you saw in the second slide, also beautiful trails running through these lower uh, foothills, lower uh, extensions of Dolador, you can say. Here we then come down on the other side from the Himri Pass. Himri is like a very small kind of never traverse. A little bit steep on the side, but once you get down, it becomes easy. Very pristine streams flowing down those very small. And then hey, typically on your way, the first thing you'll see in the middle of nowhere is some ancient temple under a big uh, pine tree, huge pine tree, where the local people have put up all these decorations. Here you then uh, see one of these, uh, here we're in the main Lug Valley actually, uh, seeing one of those small villages, which you'll see on both sides of the, uh, again, a gentle stream running through the main uh, Lug Valley. Uh, village of Kadincha, typically surrounded by a lot of farm fields. You can see the ladies picking up uh, grasses 
with a lot of, I guess, herbal medicinal values uh, for the cattle at home. Voila, from uh, this uh, valley now, let's jump over another very low altitude pass, the Pugu Pass into the Barod Valley. So pretty much straightforward here, path going straight up, not very steep. And then on the other side, we climb down until we hit the main valley where the stream dips, cuts deeper into the landscape where we'll be contouring pretty much on the right side of the valley. Uh, this crossing was actually in uh, 2018 August when it was like heavy rains there. So I was uh, climbing up through a lot of mist and uh, pretty heavy rains on the way. So I couldn't take too many pictures. Coming out of beautiful forest from the lug site, and entering an equally beautiful mountain range with a lot of forest cover at this lower altitude at the Barot site. Voila. So then from Barot, uh, once we reach Barot, I haven't shown uh, Buvu here. Buvu is much at the lower site, but from Barot again, the valley somewhere <coughs> in the inner section, we come at the town of Barot where it's split into two sections. One goes to Lohardi, one goes to uh, Bara Badagram, is the Tansar Pass, one is the Makori Pass eventually. From Barot, pretty close to the main town of Barot, which is a little touristic, uh, but apart from this, uh, once you go further, it's pretty much, uh, that's it. Uh, you go the Puli Pass here to go towards the Kangra Plains and then come back over the China Pass, come a little down. And then at the little village of Kurikut, you can go over an almost forgotten pass, the Noru Pass, to end up pretty much at Swat village and Lohardi from where the beautiful Sari Pras Traverse uh, starts to Lug Valley again. Here you can see that pulley. So again, I mean, uh, all these six passes discussed here are perfectly documented on open street maps. So you have the route in your, in your hand and uh, pretty straightforward to navigate. This uh, pulley pass is like an old kind of um, uh goods transport uh, system i think when they were building an uh, hydro plant here near Barot valley in the olden days and they did not have uh, good road connectivity yet to this town they just decided uh, i think the british they don't remember the year 1930 i think to uh, build a kind of a narrow gauge railway line here with several transition points uh, cranes and all these transition points where they basically move it on the next section of the uh, pulley here you can see, hey, as discussed, the Bottled Valley. I told you all these numerous little settlements on both sides, both slopes of the main valley. Beautiful streams, pristine streams uh, running through the main valley, all connected through beautiful little trails. A must uh, do for hikers, actually. Uh, this is so much better than all these touristic places you usually had to. Uh, okay, the trolley obviously is not in use anymore, but here you can see, right, you have the trolley on which the cable cart was rolling and then supported at the top by steel cables actually to pull up these uh, quite steep slopes. I, as you can see here, it's very steep. Okay, so beautiful actually, a little bit, yeah. You need to have a good uh, foothold here as it's quite steep, but thanks to the railway line, at least it's uh, finding the way is easy. Here you can still see the trolley, which is still uh, there. Uh, a couple of people could sit inside, and then on the back you'll have a big uh, loading capacity for all kinds of building materials they used to transport, I guess. Here you can then see uh, at the top of the, uh, here you go actually through a small mini pass, you can say, this is what I call the pulley pass, there's no other name for it, where you actually, um, they have dig through the mountain, kind of a funnel to uh, reduce the height of the pulley. And these are the kind of very ancient grails, uh, uh, cranes you see made in Britain. This is all stamped with old British company names where they uh, moved the goods from one trulli to the next section of the line. Beautiful views in some sections on this uh, traverse. Quite steep, but amazing. Wherever it's too steep, there is a trail on the left or the right side. So this brings you into uh, beef, uh, into the Bajinat side. So from Bajinat, jump on the <coughs> local train to uh, Beef and uh, Billing, uh, a famous, uh, uh, a famous, what is it? A famous, I mean, where they fly from the hillside, forgot the word. From there, there is an ancient jeep track. I think they wanted to connect this interior Baro Valley, which goes very long in sight. The main access is from some 20, 30 kilometer uh, 
to the south, but they made an attempt actually from uh, <coughs> inside of this Barov Valley actually to try to make a jeep track here, starting uh, very gentle, not very steep, contouring along the hill through the China Pass basically. It's not a pass, it's more like a ridge uh, to connect to Birs, unfortunately, <coughs> due to uh, severe landslides all along this jeep track. Uh, it's uh, uh, been in disuse and makes a beautiful uh, hiking trail. You'll always, this is same as the Delsu Pass, the Utrala site, frequent rain here, that's probably the reason of the landslide, and lush green forest, misty hills, beautiful hiking destination. Okay, so here we start at the famous uh, billing, uh, paragliding is the word, campsite, a bit touristic when you go in the season, but once you cross to this, you're in a pristine no man's land. You go along this, as I said, forgotten uh, road, uh, which looks like a jeep track here, but it's completely uh, landslided in many places. You will find nobody there except a couple of local uh, village people collecting some medicinal herbs from the forest. Beautiful, as you can see, single uh, route track uh, going to very steep mountains, very lush green forest to eventually end up again in the beautiful Barot Valley here, here looking at uh, the a last major town of Badagran on your way to the Tamsar Pass, which leads to the other town of Barabangal. This is called Chota Bangal, I think. Voila, then uh, we have the Noru Pass, which has been fallen in disuse. Yes, obviously, you can easily go from the left to the right side to side branches of the Barrio Valley uh, via bus, but still a very beautiful pass to try, nice trail. Uh, this again is the Barod Valley here, here uh, somewhere near the Kotikot site. You can see the stream running inside and beautiful green slopes on both sides of the valley. Here I'm starting off at Kotikot, uh, which is a small town. A little Daba is there, nice Daba owner allowed me to sleep inside. The Daba gave me food. Next day, early morning, one friendly villager uh, decided to guide me on his way to his little cauliflower farm and show me the way up to the pass. A lot of cauliflower uh, development here in the month of August, I believe. I went there 2018, which all gets exported for uh, vegetable momos, I guess, to the main valley. Okay, so here you can see that little side stream, beautiful waterfalls along the way as you go towards these um, protruding tentacles of the Dolador, separating Barot and, uh, and the other side of Barot. Here you have this nice man uh, at his little farm where there was no nothing except for a tarpaulin sheet with some cooking gears. He decided uh, still to give me some hot tea in the morning before sending me on my way to this beautiful pass here. The trail is not pretty clear, but if you know the direction, you just climb straight up CTC style on through this forest onto the ridge, and, and you get splendid views actually on all these ridges here you can see the china pass the trail coming from the china pass uh, also uh, on the lower foothills of the tentacles of the himalayas basically on the other side again you descend in beautiful forest and you come to the first primary school of the little town of cherna uh, nice innocent faces smiling there as you pass through a place where not a single uh, hiker will ever have passed in recent times Voila, and then the main pass, the most beautiful one, is Sari, connecting actually at a higher altitude of 3,800 meters. Uh, the left bottled value with the right lug valley, both kind of uh, the uh, lost towns almost of both valleys. You can see well documented in, uh, in open street maps, wherever there are possibilities to settle down to camp before, in case you want to do it as a multi-day traverse, you have your campsite marked. This site, however, uh, I tried in 2018. This has fallen in disuse. So instead of uh, the OSM trail, and sometimes over time things fall in disuse and get destroyed, get eaten up by jungle or destroyed by landslide. Instead of that, you follow a much better trail, very clear on uh, that contours to the right side and will connect to one of the villages there. Here you can see uh, this, the, the final hamlet you cross uh, near Lohardi, a bigger town and a bigger bus connectivity in Barod Valley. Beautiful uh, history you walk through here. The people there are also kind and gentle. Um, wonderful places actually to live. 
Then you come across this ancient bath. Sari bath is still uh, pretty much used uh, by the locals every year. They go on an annual yatra to the uh, Dinasur Lake, which is nearby the bath. You can make a nice loop between the bath and Dinasur Lake going from Bharat to Bharat. So bath is in, in pretty good uh, state. You go through a pretty significant valley here, so good uh, stream flow, a couple of bridges to cross the stream along the way. Beautiful forest, major. I mean, an awesome place to set up a campsite instead of crossing it in a single day. Here at uh, higher, um, deeper into the valley, closer to the base of the Sari Pass, you find these uh, open shelters uh, used by cattle herders or shepherds who graze these uh, alpine meadows over there. This is only a couple of hours from the Bottled Valley. Uh, beautiful location for me. I decided to camp. Uh, as I was crossing there pretty late, uh, having done the Noru Pass on the same day. Okay, and then finally you climb up through a, a scenic little trail that goes up a ridge all the way to the pass. From there you get these stunning views here on a little deeply cut little streams uh, draining these uh, side ranges from the Dolador and eventually forming the main side valley to Barut. On top you'll definitely find shepherds, uh, quite a few shelters. Uh, stunning views on the Dolador there. Uh, this should be somewhere towards the in between the Tam, somewhere towards the Makuri or the Kalihimi passes actually. And then, as I told you, you follow a very clear path through the rhododendrons here, not in bloom, of course, that's in April, May, uh, or even in June, July when we crossed there last year. Uh, but then, of course, it's fully covered with snow if you go early in the season. A uh, beautiful path leading into the Lug Valley. Here you can see that path very clear and uh, giving stunning views on the whole uh, Kulu region there, the Kulu district, and beyond you'll probably see the Parfati Valley. Gets, uh, finally, you come into uh, uh, forest areas, beautiful lakes, several lakes along your way, and then uh, you drop down to a ridge uh, through a nice Pine forest, amazing place to walk through till you hit the first settlements high up on the slopes of the Lug Valley. Beautiful places again to walk through these. Uh, here you can see some of the uh, a hydro grinder actually, so which is basically a hydro a stream powered uh, grinding stone there. Um, the vibrations of the stones are used to release here to vibrations with a wooden a wooden stick will be uh, put on the uh, grinding stone and will basically shake to release the grains one by one grinding and then uh, pulverizing and collecting them in this tray. This thing gets pow uh, powered from the bottom like this, so a big wheel and a tree here. And then uh, if it's not in use, they will uh, divert the water. But if they want to use it, they just let the water in and you get this uh, major wheel that will rotate this heavy stone. It's typically one for the entire village where people come together and just like you can still see in small villages in Tamil Nadu, uh, one shop where they grind all the, uh, uh, the uh, grains. Okay, beautiful here um, in uh, Lug Valley, one of the Dawa owners showed me a, a nice uh, quartz crystal uh, he found in the upper ranges of uh, the Lug Valley. This is similar to the Great Himalayan National Park, remember where we had big ones, uh, similar uh, crystals. As we come down then from the Lug Valley, it's really worth uh, traversing this Lug Valley uh, and, and actually on both slopes of the valley, one slope you have a jeep track through which uh, the bus also goes, but on the other side you have a beautiful trail that is really worth doing, passing through many of these uh, ancient settlements, uh, friendly people, amazing to walk through these old settlements, see these homes constructed from natural materials, stunning views really high above the Lug Valley here, a little trail, it's like you're walking in heaven basically. Well, that's it, uh, so please check out those people who want to explore something by themselves away from the commercial groups, do some uh, alpine style hiking in the valleys of Lug and Barot where you're going to be mesmerized by the beauty of the lower Himalayas. That's it. See you guys soon in the next webinar.